At any rate, at this point in time, I thought, why not open up things up for uh, any questions or comments that anybody might have? Yes? Uh, I have two. One, why would the Calusas put a canal in when they could use the Gordon River to get into the bay? That's and a great question. And yeah, the no. second question is, how did you come up with the route of the canal, as shown on the website, mm -hmm. starting around 10th Street, and going southeasterly without doing a lot of digging. Well, fortunately, there are a number of maps and plats that go back to 1921, and the surveyors who laid out the town of, of Naples were very uh, focused on actually putting the canal relative to those streets. And uh, Todd Terrell and others, we did overlays uh, using the computer to find out where the, uh, the, the work might intercept it. Now and it was, uh, it was basically fairly accurate. So you, come, you can come up later and look at this, and you can see where it crosses based on these early sur surveys. Your first question is a good one. Why go through that effort when you just can go down to Gordon's Pass? I asked John Burial that question about two hours ago. John, I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm gonna let you answer because you had a pretty good answer. Yeah, you can literally travel uh, the Ten Thousand Islands all the way up to. Uh, uh, Fort Myers, Fort Myers Beach, and be in the back bay, but there's only one place that you can, and that's here where the Naples Peninsula comes down and actually uh, blocks you. These people wanted to stay in a protected uh, inland waterway or water area, so they, they built this canal. Now, the idea wasn't that they were going out completely to the Gulf. There actually was a low swale that ran from the canal north all the way past the Beach Club Hotel and actually intersected the system that's uh, where Doctors Pass is now. So these people were actually able to stay inside and not hazard being outside, particularly with rough weather. Rough, you, know, you can imagine a log canoe isn't exactly a wonderful uh, you know, device to have out there when it gets really bad. And, and do you think that Gordon's Pass was also at times impassable and, and uh, just not as easily accessed as... Well, as no, that's to, it stayed open pretty much, although uh, John's Pass to the south filled in quite frequently. Remember, there was a large uh, shell mound right there at uh, Gordon's Pass. So that would be another reason why they would have it there, because it would be close to... Uh, well, what's interesting, on, on Pineland, there's a similar canal that crosses the island, and, and likewise, they could have gone around the north side of the island and come around, but they chose instead to dig across the island. This, this swale, is, is that marked by, uh, like, black earth? We used to, I remember years ago, about 50 years ago on the beach, you could see dark brown and black in the beach area, and I, I wondered if it had something to do with... Were there large, uh, were there large uh, whelk shells there, too? I didn't notice that, but... but okay, I, well, that, that it looks like it was almost the, like wood. You know, you'll probably never see it because of the dredging that they've done, but actually right where the canal was, there actually were large concentrations of lightning whelks. In this photograph, you can actually see... Uh, what, when was this photo taken? 1928? 1927 or 28. 27. You can actually see the canal crossing mm -hmm. right through here as they're filling it up. Again, you can come up and look at this. The interesting thing is this lady's uh, grandfather helped fill in the canal. <laughs> and now we, and now we have, we, we, we hired her son to start digging it out. So we thought it was a good amount. That's the truth. Her son recovered the carbon-14 sample we used. We felt it was justice, you know, justice coming back. <laughs> Any other uh, questions or comments? Yes. You said that Calusa controlled the area politically, but that people might have been quite different. Has anybody studied the languages of the people around? You know, there ha it's very hard to reconstruct the language that's unwritten. And, Julian Granberry. Yeah, and one scholar, Julian Granberry, took uh, Calusa words that were transcribed John by the Swan. Spanish. And, and Swan as well. So there's Swan. been two studies. Swan. So there's two studies you can look at that are fairly classic studies, but not a lot to work with, and not enough to distinguish linguistically one area from another, I would say. I was up in St. Augustine recently and learned that the Tumukuan language was different than any other of these ancient tribes in Florida, totally different, not related at all. And they were closely related to languages in South America and Central America. Uh, that's interesting, yeah. I was wondering if there was a, a big difference down here in southwest Florida. Supposedly the Creek uh, dialect is, was similar to Calusa, they, they think. Yeah, nobody really knows, and, and really the answers aren't going to come for quite, a, well, quite some time, maybe sooner than we think, and it'll happen through DNA analysis. But 
when it's politically correct to look at some of the DNA and some of these local uh, human remains that have been uncovered or continue to be uncovered, and you start comparing them, then you'll start to see these migratory routes and what the affiliations are with a lot more scientific certainty. Yes, somebody had a question back there? Yes. Well, you had mentioned uh, Pineland several times. Where is that located? Pine well, what, north of uh, Fort Myers. Pine Island. Pine Island. Oh, north of Pine Island? Yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, by the way, Island Sound. And, and the Pineland Canal partially is preserved. It is a, a, a place that tourists can visit. The difference is that it's out of the way. This actually is the only prehistoric canal uh, that exists. Uh, that can actually be experienced by lots and lots of people, so that's one more reason to really encourage uh, doing something to interpret it. Yes? Just where is it in Naples? You know, John knows the route better than me, John. Why don't you tell him where it starts and where it finishes? You went to the back 10 or 20 feet of these buildings right across the street. It'll be crossing right there and actually heading slightly north at a diagonal to the beach. At what, 10th? Actually, the, the canal actually crosses at the intersection of Broad and 3rd right here. It just barely clips the uh, north uh, the northeast corner of the uh, that little park or area that's right there. And, and wouldn't it be great to actually take that information that we have from these overlays and actually paint a trail across the road and sidewalk so people can see this and have signage along the way that tells the story? There's, yes. There's a body of water on 14. Is that a canal or is it just a water? water? That's just uh, something modern. That's not anything. All the canal is covered. There's no place you can sit. Yes. Well, so where does it go from there? Do you have any kind of a map or anything like that of the canal from one end to the other? We do. We, yeah. we have them in our the reports we've done. Uh, we probably could put it on our website. Uh, I, I work with the Archaeological and Historical Conservancy. We're out of Davie. We have a website if you ever want to look at it. And I'll make sure we put it on there because I think... And it will it show, for example, it's kind of like what you're saying about the overlay, that here, here's the dark... Yes. And then here's the streets where they are Right, exactly. We, we've okay. done that and that, and we can pick that. That 21 fact, map shows it on the top. Yeah, you can see the old version here, but we, we have a Streets are pretty, uh, pretty regular. The only one that isn't there is there was a street that was plotted uh, to the west of Gulf Shore Boulevard and never got uh, built. Yes, any other questions or comments? Yes. Uh, I was just wondering what uh, the material was that you used uh, for the dating. Yes, the, we, you have to use things that were organic. And we used soil, so we were getting an average of organic detrital that was rotting in the bottom of the canal, which means, of course, the canal is older than the material rotting in it. So ideally, you want a lot of dates, because statistically, that one sample is really not a valid uh, enough data to come to a, a real conclusion, although it certainly suggests what the date is going to be. So did you date in a sequence down and find a big break between where it was filled in and where... Yes, you could, you could see that. And we were below the fill in the organic, uh, what was forming naturally. And when Douglas was here in 1885 or so, or a little earlier, he describes the canal very dramatically with a canopy of oaks and uh, cabbage palms growing along the berms and this drop of 12 feet into the canal. So it was, uh, and he describes that the bottom of the canal was five foot perpendicular, which is an amazing amount of work to keep a perpendicular sides in the sand, and then sloped upward, creating like about 40 feet across as a result from berm to berm. Any other questions? Yes, Beck. Was there water in it at that time? Uh, I think there was in some locations, yes. Yeah, definitely. Yes, Beck. Are you able to determine how they actually did do that? Well, that's one of the great questions. I mean, what, they didn't have any metal tools. They were, we think they were probably digging with uh, shell tools and determination and, and, and uh, you know, very things that we think are primitive. But when you can organize labor and you have, you know, your model of how to do it, you know, you can get it done. Yes? Is this the same as the ditch? Yes, I, I've heard it referred to as the ditch, which, you know, makes it sound like, you know, you're going to pour water in it. But it's over by the... Uh, the city yes, it comes out near there. Uh, the club. Yeah, but it, but it's definitely a canal because a canal was for transportation. And we found a similar prehistoric canal off Lake Oca uh, uh, Lake near Lake Okeechobee, uh, Okeechobee on the Coosahatchee River. And the radiocarbon dates there 
were all 200 to 400 AD. It was really very early, and that was very dramatic. And interestingly enough, again, there are canals of sorts around uh, Mexico City from the Aztecs, but these are actually uh, irrigation canals, although they were, they were channels that were also used for, uh, for canoes as well. But the, these are very different and much longer uh, than any of those that we know of. Yes, go ahead. I, I heard one, one theory that, that they might also have been used for uh, netting fish coming in so, you know, to help feed them. Well, that's, I think that's a great theory because when it, it, I think most things are multifunctional, uh, particularly in those times, and I think that's absolutely true because they control the water flow. You could probably get fish in there, and I mean, it could be the first uh, fish farm. <laughs> there was an article in the paper a few months ago or last year where it said they were digging and they found part of the canal. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that was right, uh, right here, uh, out, not far from the building here. That we, that's what we were doing. That's when we found the evidence of the canal and took the radiocarbon dip. Yes, back there. Did the flow of the water keep the canal from getting uh, filled in? Well, I think when Douglas found it, it was definitely filled in. So, but I think like any major public works, they had to maintain it. So I'm sure there was a, a maintenance crew recruited every few months that had to keep the sand from coming down the side, so I'm sure they had to maintain it. Yes? Do you have any evidence of any navigation canal? I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Do you have any evidence of any navigation along the canal? Well, we didn't see anything because everything is, is covered, and we're hoping when we come back and do this work that we can open up a wide enough area to see if there were things on the sides of the canal, the mounds or something. We know at Artona, the place on the Clusahatchee River that I mentioned, we did find mounds on both sides of the canal that were house mounds, so people were living along the sides of the canals. Yes? Did the Seminoles displace the uh, Calusa? The, all of the uh, indigenous people of South Florida, including the Calusa, were displaced uh, as a result largely of diseases contracted from uh, Spanish contact in the 1500s. So by the time that the, uh, the Seminoles and their ancestors arrived, which were was first uh, war parties in the early 1700s, they were coming down from the Carolinas and, and doing raids on these Indians and bringing them back to, uh, to South Carolina to work on rice and indigo plantations. And literally hundreds of the Indians between 1709 and the 1760s were taken up to the Carolinas. It was such a major uh, impact on the populations, the ones that were still alive, that the Calusa, who at one time were major enemies of the Spanish, actually petitioned the governor of Cuba to allow them to immigrate to Cuba where they could be safe and secure. So beginning in 1709 to 1763, thousands of Calusa and De Kesta and other Florida Indians actually were taken by uh, the Spanish governor through ships uh, to Cuba and put into three settlements outside of, uh, one outside of Havana and two others. Uh, the problem was after they arrived, even more of these people died because of the contact with, uh, with the Europeans. And some of them actually migrated back to South Florida to become known as the Spanish Indians, as described by the, by the Americans who took over Florida. 